Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today's information session where we will be visiting the um, open call that we have right now, the past Performing Arts Salon Saturdays um, opportunity. So thank you for tuning in. Um, it is just a minute or two after 3 p.m. So we will get started. And as I've mentioned, um, via email, I believe this uh, program will be recorded. So we will post it to our YouTube channel. Um, and that is the Snug Harbor Cultural Center's YouTube channel after today. Um, might need about 24 hours to, to get that going, um, but you can always return back to that as a resource as you are hopefully working on your pass application. Um, so just a, a little housekeeping, um, uh, if you are in need of closed captions, there should be an icon on the bottom of your screen if you are on a desktop, um, as well as if you are mobile, um, you want to, if you need that, to access that, go to your settings. Um, everybody's computer is just a little different. So um, if you have any questions or tech uh, related issues, feel free to direct message either Shauna or myself. Um, we will both be introducing ourselves momentarily, but you can certainly send us a message if you need some support. So um, additionally, I just wanted to mention that um, we are very grateful to our funders and supporters of this residency program. So I just want to give a shout out to the Howard Gilman Foundation, to the Samuel I. Newhouse Foundation, to the New York State Council on the Arts um, under uh, Governor Kathy Hochul and the state legislature, as well as the Department of Cultural Affairs. Um, these are the uh, entities that help to support um, arts and culture programming across New York State and New York City. And we are very grateful to their support to keep this program running. So so without further ado, I'm going to get started. Um, so we will do brief staff introductions so you can get to know our team. Um, I'll start with myself since I am on the mic. Um, my name is Melissa West. I am the director and senior curator of the Newhouse Center for Contemporary Art at Snug Harbor. We are um, located um, in the oldest building on campus and I, I'll share some footage and photos of that later on. Um, but the Newhouse Center is really the hub for arts and culture across our campus. So we are thrilled to offer opportunities like these residencies um, throughout the year. Um, I've been with Snug Harbor for nine years and um, my background is in dance and performance and so I um, um, have that lived experience um, working as an artist in the community and understand how difficult and challenging it can be to get support for your work. So we are here to support. Um, so that's me. I'm going to pass the mic to Shauna. Hi, everyone. I'm Shauna Salmon. I'm the arts production and gallery manager. I've been at Snug Harbor working in the arts department for the last almost eight years this year. Uh, my background is in dance and theater. I'm so happy to have you all on the call. And this is one of my favorite programs that we offer. So I'm excited to kind of tell you more about it. Awesome. Thank you, Shauna. And I echo your enthusiasm. Um, so as you can see, Shauna and I have been working together for quite a number of years. And um, this program is near and dear to our hearts. Um, so we'll get started. Um, if you have a question throughout this session, feel free to activate the Q&A box or the chat. We will um, save the last couple of moments at the end of the session to address any unanswered questions. If you do um, plug in a question and it doesn't get answered um, during the presentation, please know that that is um, going, we're going to address that at the end. It's a little difficult to do uh, double duty sometimes while running these Zooms. So um, if you do have something that comes up, you know, please do not hesitate to plug that in. It's possible that someone else may have that very same question. So we will get started. Um, I, I like to include a lot of visual imagery in our presentations just so you can get a feel for um, the program. And pardon me if you hear a, a fairy foghorn in the background, that is part of the ambiance and aesthetic of Snug Harbor. Um, and on this rainy, foggy day, it makes a lot of sense. So I start with this image of um, 
Tani Albert, who is um, a performer within a project by Laura Neese, who was one of our past artists last spring. Um, and you can see the the background of uh, the historical space in, in the distance and in, in the background. And we'll get into the kind of magic and beauty of the spaces that we offer as part of this residency program. Um, but we just love this, um, this image and, and bringing into the forefront the artists who really are at the heart of this program. So I start with a bit of history. Uh, for those of you on the call who are new to Snug Harbor, welcome. We are located on Staten Island's North Shore. We are an 83-acre cultural campus and culture park. So we do a lot um, across our sprawling grounds. And um, we're really you know, site-specific in the sense that we are activating a historic landmarked space. So you can see on this postcard, which is part of the SUNY Maritime uh, archives. Um, this is one of the historical postcards that depict an aerial view of our, our campus from the 19th century. And actually, it doesn't, with some ex exceptions, it doesn't look all too too different. Um, you know, we we have 26 historic buildings, including the um, front five buildings, which include our new house center for contemporary art. Um, and ooh, Snug Harbor is a beacon for arts um, and culture throughout the borough of Staten Island. But we also serve the broader New York City metropolitan area, including artists, audiences, and many of the participants that come through our campus. We, um, The arts are one component of a much larger organization, um, Snug Harbor Cultural Center and Botanical Garden, which is a steward of the site. So not only the historic buildings, but we have 83 acres, including wetlands. We have a two and a half acre production farm. We have a number of constituent organizations, such as the Staten Island Museum, the Noble Maritime Collection, the Staten Island Children's Museum, and Art Lab that all you know, activate and utilize the site in different ways. Um, we have a number of events, festivals throughout the year. So the outdoors and the indoors really come into play. Um, and actually a lot of times the artists and residents are responding to or working with the site in various capacities. So it is good to just get a visual. And I like to bring in the historical aspects because they really inform and shape um, the programming that we offer to the general public. So um, this residency program is rooted in um, sight, uh, the, the experience of, of being a, a practicing artist in a site that has a lot of history and culture, and then um, you know the physicality of that, but also the, the, the layers of um, information that come with that. So this, uh, you know, is a starting point to understanding more about Snug Harbor. If you're interested in the um, the organization at large, you are more than welcome to visit our website, uh, which is snug-harbor.org, and our social media. There's um, historical information alongside current programming, which includes the arts, but is certainly not limited to just that. So that's a little bit about that. We also, um, I, I love to just kind of bring in again the visuals so that you can see the program in action. This is um, the front entrance of the New House Center for Contemporary Art. And you can see um, Jody Melnick and several performers and actually the, the original originator of this program, the founder of the program, Gabri Krista, in the doorway. Um, but you see these iconic um, Greek revival buildings that are activated by artists in so many different ways. Um, the New House Center for Contemporary Art is Staten Island's leading incubator for bold and innovative of art. So we are really focused on the development and presentation of new work in contemporary art. And we have an expansive definition of what that is. Um, and it encompasses not only the visual arts, but the performing arts as well. So we do a variety of programming. We host and um, develop exhibitions, um, residencies such as this, uh, public art across the grounds, and um, related public programming such as artist talk screenings and other um, other things that bring the community in. Um, we are uh, we address a wide range of visitors, so that you know ranges from students and young adults through um, people who are coming uh, from other parts of the city and sometimes internationally and, and national tourists, um, so local and global, as well as um, 
artists ranging from emerging artists to established and um, uh, mid-career artists and late career artists. We do not have um, a restriction on for this residency who can apply for this. Um, we do tend to um, try to give resources to emerging artists and curators because they do not often have um, the spaces or, or institutional resources to do that, um, to create their work, but we are certainly not limited to um, emerging artists. We have certainly supported artists in a variety of stages of your career. So just a little bit about the Newhouse Center. So getting into the residency program, I'll start with just a brief description about what is PASS. PASS is an acronym. It stands for Performing Arts Salon Saturdays. Um, and it was really built in the mode of a salon, which kind of, you know, is an intimate performance or um, space for dialogue or gathering space where people can kind of in an intimate setting come together and explore and discuss and um, engage around the arts. Um, and so um, Gabri Krista, who founded this program in 2015, was really thinking about it in that vein. Um, it has since grown into a residency program that encompasses live work opportunities, a residency fee, uh, curatorial support, and a public showing, which typically happens on a Saturday, hence the name, and um, can take place uh typically in the galleries or the dance center, but certainly has happened in other spaces on our vast campus. The focus is on the creation and development of new original work in dance, music, theater, and multidisciplinary performance. And again, we have an expansive view um, or definition of what that entails. So, um, you know, if you don't see your category neatly fit into the, these boxes here, um, you are certainly encouraged to reach out to us and ask questions if, if you're a little curious. Um, but we do, you know, if, you're, if your work is rooted in a live performance element, if that's kind of the driving um, force behind your work, that could be opera, that could be, um, you know, we've had artists who are rooted in spoken word or poetry apply. Um, there just has to be some kind of undercurrent of um, performance beyond just, you know, reading a poem to an audience. There should be some something kind of bringing the, the production or the piece together in a way that has, um, uh, you know, a, a larger life than just a straightforward reading. But again, if you don't see your category here and you are based in performance art or, or you know, some other kind of category that maybe doesn't neatly fold in, we encourage you to reach out to us and, um, you know, you're welcome to apply as long as you can kind of present your work from that lens of liveness and performance. So we are currently seeking applications for the next cohort of artists in residence. And from this open call, we will select four projects that will um, be in residence over the next uh, year. And so we'll talk more about timing and eligibility and criteria and all of that momentarily, but just so that you're aware, this can be a, you know, a, a tiny bit of a competitive process in that there are only four spots. But we do try to balance that with um, a variety of, of factors and considerations. So we try to make sure that there's a local artist from Staten Island represented in that cohort. We try to make sure that there is a diversity of experiences and practices in that cohort. And so it's, it's a tough decision um, for the panel, but we certainly have been so inspired by all the, dis the different projects that we've seen over the past couple of years. And, um, and often, you know, even if a project doesn't get selected, but there has been a lot of discussion in the panel or, you know, there's a there is an alignment with our programming and our mission, um, you know, we will often look for other ways to stay connected with artists who maybe aren't selected in this particular call. So I'll take a moment to go through our past 
program objectives. So these are the um, the goals that we're hoping to accomplish through this programmatic work, um, and that uh, you know on the other side we can look back and say we've we've accomplished these things, and and the artists have benefited in these ways. So um, the first being that we provide space and support for performing artists at different stages in their careers to develop and deepen their craft. So we recognize, especially in New York City, that it is particularly challenging to find dedicated space to really go inward, to explore the different elements of your practice, to uh, maybe get a new project off the ground. And so the residency is specifically looking toward um, artists who are hoping to evolve through their their project, who are interested in going a little deeper, who are um, ready for an opportunity to, to, to continue growing and developing your work. We also aim to incubate discourse, conversation, civic engagement, and community engagement around new ideas and artistic expression. So the Newhouse Center being an, an incubator we, um, you know, are really looking for projects that are new, that there's some um, original um, component that is unique, that is aesthetically um, exciting, that um, also brings out uh, points of connection with the community. So Staten Island is a diverse place. Um, we have 500,000 people here. Uh, we are in New York City. We are not geographically that far from Manhattan. So there's a lot going on. And we want to make sure that the art is um, in some ways a conduit for um, for getting people engaged with each other, for getting the community to experience arts and culture locally, for there to be discussion and dialogue between the artists and the audience. Um, so um, beyond just developing your work, that there is a um, hopefully um, something to ignite um, a conversation with the people around you. And then finally, cultivating a supportive environment for artists to take risks in their process, to take creative risks in practice and in vision. So again, that sense of growth and evolution that you are, as an artist, um, you know, not looking to just play it safe and in the same, um, you know, kind of vain as previous projects or previous works, we want to see that you're trying to push yourself. Um, and that that can come through through your work sample, through your narrative, through the project idea itself. Um, so we really want to be a container for that exploration and for you to feel guided, supported, um, and that you have a team behind you to help get your work to where you might envision it to go. So as I mentioned, this open call is currently live. So the past um, Performing Arts Salon Saturdays open call is open now through April 18th. And we close the call at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time uh, on April 18th. Um, we will then go through a process of evaluating each proposal. We have a jury panel that we'll talk about momentarily. And the goal is to review all of those applications and to make a final decision with notifications going out via email to all, um, all folks who have signed up or have applied to the open call by June 18th. Do not hold me specifically to that date, please. <laughs> um, sometimes we're delayed just a slightly, um, but the goal is to get notifications out to all um, applicants by June 18th, 2024. So that's a timeline. Um, the selected residencies, um, which are each at increments of four weeks at a time, which we'll go into a little bit more, um, selected residencies will be scheduled between September 2024 and um, scheduled throughout the fall into the spring of June 2025. So it's what we call our fiscal year, um, which runs from July through June. Um, so we will be looking toward um, scheduling out those residencies um, beginning in the fall. And each project that we um, embark on will culminate in a public performance 
which is a work in progress style. So it is a little bit raw. It's a little bit in process. Um, it's not fully finished or fully formed necessarily. Um, and we will schedule those toward the end of the residency period. So for example, if you are in residence in the month of March, 2025, um, you know, likely you'll begin your residency around March 1, or, you know, even if that's a little bit earlier, four weeks from that time, you will share out your work in progress with the community in a very informal and supportive environment. Now, just a note that if you are a dancer or choreographer who has um, applied to the CUNY Dance Initiative, we partner with the CUNY Dance Initiative and the College of Staten Island and will select one additional, outside of this call that we're talking about today, we'll be selecting one pass CDI artist to be in residence at Snug Harbor in partnership with the College of Staten Island. So that functions as a separate open call. It was just happening a couple of weeks ago. So you might've applied for that, perhaps if you're on this call and you're a choreographer. Uh, if you apply to that residency, we, we will be reviewing your proposal. Um, the question sometimes comes up whether, you know, if, if you should apply to both. Um, you, it is not required and it's um, it might actually save you some time to not have to apply to two different residency tracks. Um, but uh, we, you know, we will review all reports proposals that come through um, that are eligible for pass, um, but you may want to save yourself some time if you have already applied for the CUNY Dance Initiative, um, you know, it, it, we will review your proposal regardless. So just focusing in on the award. So you get a residency, what, what do you actually receive from, um, from that award? Um, so all selected artists receive a $1,500 residency performance honorarium. So that is a nominal fee to the artist to support your project. We recognize that's not nearly enough as anyone ever needs to, to get their work off the ground, um, but we are certainly available to help you um, if you are applying for other grants and opportunities to support your work beyond the scope of this residency. Um, we are available to help um, and kind of consult with you about that. Um, so each artist receives a $1,500 honorarium alongside photo and video documentation of the final culminating performance. Selected artists also receive up to 100 hours of studio time in the Dance Center or the Newhouse Center galleries. I will say that some of these spaces are available based on scheduling. So the dance center, for example, is a shared space. So um, we try to schedule out the residencies as soon as we possibly can. Um, so you get up to 100 hours, which is, a, you know, for four weeks time, it is, um, it is a nice amount of time. Um, we do also provide one month access to a private residence on site. So we'll have some photos later of the historic cottage that you will uh, have 24 seven access to. Um, and of course, if you're rehearsing in your studio, in your, in your cottage, you can rehearse for as many hours as you'd like. Um, and you uh, receive access to that cottage for the month preceding your public showing. So that, that residency time, you're able to come and go as you please. So eligibility, an important um, piece of information before you get started on your application. So this is an open and free open call. Um, so it's open to all New York City metro area artists. Um, and so how that's being defined is artists who are living and or consistently working in the metropolitan area, the New York City metro area. So that does include some counties in New Jersey. That includes, um, you know, Westchester County, Long Island, and some areas of the lower Hudson Valley. Um, and you know, even I think little pockets of Connecticut. So if you, you know, if, if you are um, living within the New York City metro area, that's a little broad, you're welcome to apply. Um, you do need to demonstrate a history of creating new work in live performance. So um, there will be a question in the application that asks you to share out some of your performance history that does not, you know, how we're defining performance history is, is a publicly shared 
venue. So, you know, if you're performing outdoor work, because we have a lot of outdoor space, um, and you primarily perform through, um, you know, there's the city streets and other types of programs where you're outside, um, as long as you have some kind of documentation of that and um, there's some opportunity for an audience, we will consider that as part of your demonstrated history. Um, we recognize that not all artists are receiving commissions or invitations to um, fully formed uh, seasons or productions. So, you know, again, within reason, we will um, consider works that have been shared with the public in some capacity, um, whether that's self-produced or informal or, you know, beyond. But but you but the panel will be looking at your your experience um, and your demonstrated um, history of sharing your work. Artists must be over eight, 18 or over to apply. And um, artists who are um, who are or will be enrolled in college or university degree programs, and that includes undergrad and masters. It includes arts specific, so your MFAs and beyond. If you are in a degree granting program between August first, twenty twenty four, and June thirtieth, twenty twenty five, you are not presently eligible to apply for pass. And then finally, um, if you have already received a pass award and residency, you are not currently eligible to apply. So moving through program requirements. So if you do receive this award, which um, would be uh, beginning again in uh, 2024 and September on, um, you will be required to work on site during the agreed upon residency timeframe. So again, that doesn't mean you have to stay here 24 seven for all four weeks, but it does mean that you are actively engaging on site and working in the spaces throughout that time frame. You are, um, you know, there is a requirement to meet and communicate with art staff, uh, such Shauna and I, on project development. And um, that typically includes um, a combination of Zoom and in-person. Um, and we try to give you a lot of room to do your work without too much intervention, but we do find that it's helpful for residencies for there to be some moments of connection with the staff. So we usually do that um, after you get your award, we'll meet with you on Zoom, have an intro phone call, and then we'll usually try to encourage a site visit where you come out here and really kind of walk the spaces with us and start talking about your project in real, you know, in, in real space and time. And then um once you get here, we will do a quick orientation with you, um, kind of walk you through the cottage, get you settled. And then um, after that, we usually request like a, some kind of midpoint check-in. Again, that can be virtual, that can be in person if you're already on the grounds. And um, we do usually um, try to get to see the work before it is shared. That's a, a big part of the process. Um, and so, you know, those are a couple of touch points throughout the process where we can meet either virtually and or in person to really connect around the project's development. And so there was that final culminating work in progress performance. Again, that is a low tech kind of informal um, sharing out of your process where you are. And so that can be, um, you know, a fully formed, typically it's about 30 to 45 minutes of sharing material. Um, that could be a couple of excerpts of, of things that you're working on. That could be, um, you know, from start to finish, that can include some um, other elements like, you know, maybe there's prompts or discussions or audience, in, you know, being invited into the practice in some way, we're kind of flexible about what that looks like and, and try to work with you to make sure that it's the best representation of your project at the time. We also, um, after the works in progress showing, we do have um, what we consider a very informal talk back session. So kind of like a question and answer Q&A moderated typically by myself um, or a staff member with the audience after the performance. And so that, again, is that opportunity for dialogue. If you, you might have questions for the audience, of like, how did you experience this thing? I'm still working this out. What did you get from this? Or someone might have a really thought provoking question for you. 
to get you to think a little bit more about your your process. And so we find that those are really generative spaces for the audience and the artist to kind of come together. Um, it's typically about 15 minutes in length, maybe 20 minutes, depending on how, um, how good we're all feeling about the conversation. Um, we try not to let it linger too, too long. Um, but we do think that there's a lot of value in those moments of exchange. And um, once you're done with your residency, there is a an exit survey. Um, it's on Google Forms. It's typically very um, brief, and it helps us to learn more about your experience and then to make improvements for the residencies in the future. Um, and then more in the last couple of seasons, we've really been kind of thinking about um, our more opportunities to engage with the artist around social media and digital content. And so um, we sometimes will spotlight our current artists and residents through our e-newsletters. Um, we'll do more and more. We're doing IG lives with the artist to um, get people hyped and excited about your upcoming performance, to talk a little bit about your residency time. Um, and in the past, we've also done things like we have a blog called The Hyphen, um, and during COVID, when we were kind of staggering residencies, um, that was one way we were engaging was by interviewing artists or asking questions and kind of drafting up interesting um, articles that we could post to our blog. So there are a number of ways that we can engage around um, your residency through digital and social engagement. And we have periodically done workshops or in-person classes and things like that um, prior to the culminating performance. So there's opportunities beyond just that, um, that public showing. And so I mentioned a little bit about the process of selection uh, before, but I'll go a little bit further into that. So for each of these cohorts, we have um, um, a residency selection panel. So for this upcoming open call, um, after it closes, we will um, convene a panel comprised of Snug Harbor staff and arts professionals. Um, it's a closed panel, so we don't release their names, but we do like to bring in folks who are either alum alumni of the program or have um, familiarity with Staten Island and the Snug Harbor arts communities. Um, but that's not exclusively, you know, we we work with a lot of different um, arts professionals to um, just kind of create a unique um, panel of different perspectives and voices that um, will review each project and we will then deliberate. And it's never easy, but we also um, really believe in a democratic consensus built process. And so um, we will uh, try to make the best decisions with the information that we have. So speaking of criteria, um, we're really looking for a combination of um, artistic merit, the ability to demonstrate your artistic merit through work sample, through your work sample, um, and through your articulation of a strong and clear narrative. Um, so we, you know, we're looking for originality and voice. Um, we're looking for um projects that might make sense specifically within our community or the site. Um, we are looking for the narrative to really compel us to, to be able to articulate through language why it is that this residency makes sense for you at this given time and why this particular location might really help to um, unlock something in your process. Um, the artistic merit... Uh, is primarily looked at through the work sample. And um, this year there's only one work sample requested um, five minutes in length. Um, we do prefer continuous um, footage versus a reel. We're not super interested in, in necessarily seeing reels of your work, but we want to see the work as it kind of naturally takes shape. So, um, you know, that's going to mean different things for different genres. If you're working in sound, then you're going to likely want to share a, um, you know, a, a clip of your work either through SoundCloud or some of the other platforms. Um, if you're a dance artist, we're probably going to want to see something visual. So either YouTube or Vimeo, um, we usually ask for links that you can send us of your work sample. Um, 
rather than, you know, having us download it or whatever. Um, if you are, you know, if you're a theater maker, yes, the script is nice, but it's always good to see how, um, you know, in previous works that you've made, what does that look like? What does that sound like? How, what is the sort of texture of that liveness, the experience of seeing our artists take that vision to life? And so I, I think the, the panel will veer toward really wanting to see that versus being told that. So um, so I recommend video. And if you're, you know, obviously with sound, you, you might want to just send us a sample of your work through SoundCloud or some of the other platforms. So that's work sample, strong and clear narrative. Um, we've reduced the application over the last two years so that the application questions are a little bit more pointed and ask specifically um, you know, with with word limitations or character limit limitations, um, ask you to describe the project, your goals for the residency, why Snug Harbor. Um, but we try to keep it succinct so that you're not, you know, having to slay away at this uh, for for many hours and days. Um, the goal is to make it simple enough um, for us to get a, a picture of your work and who you are. Um, and I will also say that if you are um, working on your application, we recommend working on it separately, um, you know, on a Google Doc or um, Notepad or whatever platform you have um, to, to write down your words rather than directly into the Google form where the application is because um, it has happened to all of us where you might lose your work and it would be very, um, it's not always uh, the best feeling when you've worked on something really hard and then it doesn't save for whatever reason. So pro tip is to to work on your narrative elsewhere before plugging it into the form. And then site responsiveness, again, are you engaging with the site? How are you informed by the, the architecture, the history, the built environment? Um, it is not a requirement for your work to directly be related to those ideas. But we do want to see some kind of contemplation of that in the creative process. So maybe your project is, um, you know, kind of thinking about some layers of history and it could be in a different context, but you're trying to connect that back to the site or you're thinking about um, how you might move through a particular space and, and what does that what does the the built environment can you know the layers of the energy and, the, and what it, what that contains? So um, it's not that it has to manifest in your final project presentation, but that we want to see that you're thinking about that in your application um, or that you're conscious of it. Um, I would say. So now I'm going to turn it over to Shauna to go through some spaces and um, past projects just to give a feel for it. And again, if you have questions, plug them into either the chat or the Q&A and we will get to them um, when we are done with the presentation. Yes, so here we have on one of our lovely cottages, we do have two historic cottages which serve as the space in which you would reside during your residency here at Snug Harbor. And um, in each cottage, we do have um, at least two bedrooms on the second floor. There are two restrooms. Um, this is instead of cottage B. So as you can see, there's a large living area here. There's also um, a dining area on the opposite side of that wall. And then um, this is in cottage A. So there's tons of space on the first floor. There's, um, like I mentioned, a separate living, separate dining a flex space, um, a kitchen, a fully functional kitchen, um, and a restroom on each floor. And this is one of the dining rooms for each of the cottages. And this is one of the bedrooms. Um, each, each cottage can sleep about four to six folks um, comfortably. So we've had artists that have come by themselves and kind of enjoy kind of spreading out and living in this like sprawling space. And then we've had folks that have brought their team with them to kind of help create throughout this residency. So it's kind of been a mix of what makes the most sense for your project, depending on what it is. And yeah, like I mentioned, each um, cottage has two to three bedrooms. There's a first floor and a second floor. Um, you can live, you can use it as a space where you primarily um, live or you can use it as a live work space, which is what most most folks um, tend to do depending on the medium that they're working in. Um, this is one of our beautiful dance studios. This is um, on the second floor of building G in the dance center. 
Um, this is one of our studios. This one has hardwood floors. It is a 30 by 40 space, which, which as you can see in the photo has tons of natural lighting. Um, yeah. And then we also have another studio, which is just across the hall. It's the same layout. Um, it's a 30 by 40 studio, but this one has um, Marley floors and ballet bars inside with tons of natural lighting as well. And then these are um, some of our galleries in building um, G, which is right below the dance studios, literally right underneath it, um, where we have had performances take place in here as well. Um, depending on the time of year and depending on the exhibitions that are in the space, this may be available for you to use as either rehearsal or performance space as well. This is from um, actually our most recent past performance, which, is, which was in December of 2023 with Zayn Alam. This was a three channel video installation. Um, yeah, so there was a live music um, element at the beginning of the piece and then it switched to video performance, which was very sp site specific and was all filmed here at Snow Harbor for the most part. This is from um, June of 2023 with Hillary Hawk, which was another one of our um, recent past cohorts. Um, she collaborated with um, Claude and Ola and they did a musical performance in the main hall, which is another space that is inside the Newhouse Center. This is Rebecca Medina from, um, from 2021, um, Rebecca did a dance piece, but also a um, kind of walking tour where you scanned a QR code and you were able to kind of listen into the sound and go on a guided walk throughout the space. Um, this is in the wetland. This is a performance from Nia Love, which was a dance performance. Um, this took place at the Heritage Farm, as well as um, just near the Secret Garden. Um, this was a dance piece, but also, as you can see, there's some harvesting happening and some music playing as well. This is um, one of the earlier past performances from 2015 with Peter Zumo, um, which was a jazz performance, I believe. And this took place in the Newhouse Center in one of the galleries. This was from 2017. Um, 2017. This was a spoken word performance by Ramia Ramana, and she brought in um, three other poets to kind of perform with her as well. This was from 2019, Adrian Westwood. This was a dance performance, but there was also live music and this actually took place inside of Cottage B. This is um, Lily Gold from 2019 as well. Um, this took place in the dance center in one of the studios that I mentioned before with lots of natural lighting, one of the 30 by 40 studios. And this was a dance, but also kind of multidisciplinary performance. This was um, from 2019. This is in Shinbone Alley with Kinesis Project Dance Theater. Um, this was a very site responsive piece. This, this took place in Shinbone Alley as well as inside the Newhouse Center and in the hyphen linking Building C and Building G together as well. And I'll turn the mic back over to Melissa. Thank you, Shauna. Um... So as you can see from those uh, photos, there are a wide range of possibilities in terms of where you work and how you work. Um, uh, and we uh, we tried to give um, a wide representation of the genres and projects that have come through our space. Um, we uh so this particular residency is for as i mentioned artists working in different media um, around performance and so um you know this previous cohort that we have for 2024 includes an opera project it includes a dance project it includes music and um you know there's there's a there are possibilities beyond that so we would encourage you if you're considering it again you can, you're welcome to reach out to us if you have questions in the chat or via email later um but we are as expansive as we can be with, with how we're defining um performance so um application checklist um as you're working on your materials um they will be submitted via google form that is the format for the application by thursday april 18th 2024 um, and that is again at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time um, at the end of Thursday, April 18th. Um, the form is linked on our website and we'll plug those links into the chat momentarily, but you can um, hit that. It'll take you to a Google form where you can um, complete your application. Um, 
the application is comprised of a brief yes or no question for eligibility, um, basically making sure that you agree that you are eligible based on the criteria we talked about earlier. So you're not a student, you're not a former past artist, you're 18 years of age or older, and you reside and work in the metro area, the New York City metro area. Um, once you get past that eligibility question, there are um, a combination of short and longer form responses asking you about your, your basically your contact information, asking you about your um, your project, your uh, residency goals, um, asking about your um, artist statement, your work as a whole, um, and what you need to have a successful residency. Um, after those, those questions, you will be asked to submit a work sample. Again, if you are um, submitting a work sample in dance or theater um, or spoken word that has some perf other performative elements, we highly recommend um, using a video um, that you can link to us from either YouTube or Vimeo. If you are a sound-based artist, we are happy to look at video or um, samples of your work through either SoundCloud or other um, uh, music-based platforms, um, Spotify, whatever it is. Um, and uh, the work sample also asks for a brief um, uh, narrative description of it. So what are we looking at? Um, any cue points that you need us to look at? Um, and again, we would like to avoid reels or highlights and really focus in on, um, you know, kind of continuous footage um, of your work uh, as it's been performed. The last piece of the application is a demographic survey. Um, so this is a um, a survey that is the questions are optional. So if you prefer not to answer particular questions, you you are um, you have that option. Um, our goal in collecting demographic information is to look at the aggregate, um, you know, to see how we did in terms of our community engagement across different genres and different geographic areas, different racial and um, gender um, uh, demographics, and, and all of that is anonymous. So we're not looking at it on a micro level, we're looking at it on a macro level to just kind of learn where, you know, where we can improve, where we can engage um, further, and, and just to get a snapshot of what the application, um, the applicants from this uh, open call, you know, uh, where they, they land. So those are the components of the application. Um, there should be, a, when you're done, you should be able to get a return receipt from Google um, that lets you know that you've completed your application. Um, and then again, you should hear from us regardless of the um, outcome by um, mid-June, uh, June 18th is the goal to uh, send out notifications via email. Um, late and incomplete submissions will not be reviewed. Um, so actually you might not even be able to submit them after that deadline, but um, we will not review um, anything time stamped after 11.59 um, p.m. on the 18th, um, April 18th. And um, we encourage you to work separately on your narrative. So that way you do not, you're not at risk of losing your work for any reason. You have it saved safely and you can um, submit uh, through the Google form. So if you have any application questions that aren't answered today, please reach out to us at info at snug-harbor.org. We will um, respond uh, as timely and um, as uh, efficiently as we can. Um, we are a small team and we're doing the best to, to serve a number of different programs and projects, but um, we are more than um, happy to answer and discuss uh, any sort of questions further. Um, so I'm going to stop screen sharing and we are going to see if there are any questions at all. I don't see any in the chat. And I don't see any in the Q&A box. I do see someone has written, thank you. You are so very welcome. Um, now is your opportunity. Um, if you do have a question that's come up, um, please feel free to type that in now. We're happy to answer anything further that hasn't been addressed. Um, and while we're giving some space for that, I'll just say um, we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary for PASS this year. Um, so it was founded in 2015 by Gabri Krista, who is still very active at Snug Harbor and supportive of our work. And um, 
It's been really great to be a part of this. I came in right as um, the program started and um, Shauna not too long after. And I know um, it's been really a joy to just see the different projects and artists that come through the new house in Snug Harbor. So we do have a, a question. How often does this application for site performances happen? So PASS is an annual open call. So we typically go um, live uh, with the open call in, I would say this year we went live the last week of February and we usually run it for about six weeks. Um, and it happens on an annual basis. So typically early spring. Um, so if for some reason you don't apply this year or you don't get it this year, um, you're always welcome to resubmit again or come up with a different project for next time. So um, it's on an annual basis. Um, other question, can you split the work sample between VR footage and audio to demonstrate visual concept with sound to combine? Um, so there's five minutes total um, and there's one space for work samples. So I would say if you have a work sample beyond what you're submitting that you'd like to link us to, as long as it can be viewed within five minutes or less in total, um, there is a space um, that will ask if you have any other information about your work sample, you could probably, you can possibly link it there. Um, so in general, we, we used to do two work samples, um, but we've settled on one just to make things easier for the panel and to make things easier for the artist. Um, so our preference is to have one work sample, but if you have um, another piece and we can look at everything within five minutes, you're welcome to link it in um, the supplementary uh, space for that um, in the work sample section. Any additional last questions? Okay, um, there is another, it asks about collaboration. Um, collaboration, okay, question mark, or and use funds to work with mentor to learn new technologies. For example, electronic processing for solo performance piece. Um, so I think that sounds exciting. Like I said, we are interested in new ideas and kind of cultivating um, uh, discourse around new uh, forms of artistic expression. So I would say um, you are welcome to submit a project where if you are let's say a solo artist um, working on a performance project and you want to work with someone to learn a new technology or a new skill, um, you are welcome to use the resources for that and to work with that person and to even invite them to stay. Um, like Shauna said, there's um, room for comfortably for four to six people per cottage. There are different bedrooms. There's a pullout couch on the first floor of each um, cottage space. So um, you could very easily invite someone to come stay and work with them closely. And collaboration is a, is a part of the creative process um, for many artists. So we've certainly had that. Zane alum, who um, Shauna highlighted um, from our current past cohort, um, he worked with a couple of collaborators who stayed over and worked with him on sound design and video production. Um, Lily Gold, who um, we also highlighted in, in our um, presentation, brought in um, Lily as a dance artist primarily, and, and um, Lily worked with um, a, a sound coach uh, during uh, the residency. So there's certainly room for that. Do you offer speakers for site performance or do we have to have our own team? So we do have, um, I would say, uh, basic um, equipment for sound. Um, Shauna is actually in charge of production. Um, so do you want to address what we have and what we can support? Um, yeah, so we do have um, a sound system. We also have a portable PA, uh, which we can bring kind of all over the grounds. And we have used that um, outdoors and indoors, depending on the space and depending on what the needs of the performance are. Um, a lot of folks tend to perform in the dance studios, which is a smaller space. It's 30 by 40. So usually the portable PA system works well in there. But I believe there's actually a new sound system in that dance space as well. So um, I think it'll just depend on exactly what the needs are. But we do have some basic sound um, equipment and microphones and things like that that we can offer while you are here. And I will echo that um, we have 
certain production equipment, as Shauna said, in-house. Um, we also do, uh, for the public sharing the performance at the end, we do, um, you know, we do have a small team. So um, I'm usually there, I facilitate the, the Q&A and I host the event. I usually welcome people and I, you know, make sure that everything's going smoothly. Shauna is there to, um, you know, kind of facilitate the production end of things. Mm -hmm. We do, um, depending on the nature of the project, we, we do sometimes have sound or tech support um, mm -hmm. and front of house support. So there is a team um to help and to make things run smoothly that said this is primarily a low tech project space mm -hmm. um so you know site specific we're working in uh non traditional spaces so mm -hmm. um you know we we aren't doing fully fledged productions um we are supporting works in process so um if you for some reason have something that requires more technical specificity um that is usually where you know you might bring in um a collaborator to help so for mm -hmm. example Zane was working on um, the three channel um, video projection and sound design. And so Zane worked with collaborators to edit the video to, um, you know, they, they helped work with our team to set up the projections. And, you know, so there is some, we're a small team. So there is some um, uh, support that I think has mm -hmm. to work both ways for it, for us to get the project up and running. Um, and anything beyond the basics um, might need, you know, some more thought and discussion. Um, but yes, to answer your question, um, there is uh, sound support available. Do you offer programs or can we bring our own programs for our performance to offer written summary or mapping for the audience? That is a good question. So we do generally print a program. It is usually an eight and a half by 11 um, folded um, printed in color in-house. Um, we have sometimes printed um, supplementary materials. So if there's like a sound walk or there's um, you're moving through different spaces, you might have... Um, you know, uh, a map that you want to print, or you might have a poem if you're working with, you know, spoken word or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have a production printer in-house. We do print um, programs. Um, I usually work with the artist to share the program in advance, edit it, make sure it's in the format. Um, but we're certainly, you know, open and adaptive to different formats for that. Um, but, you know, we, we do the printing in-house. So yes is the answer to your question. We have time for one or two more questions. If there is anything else um, that hasn't been addressed that you would like to learn. Great. It looks like we've wrapped. Oh, what if it rains? Um, that's well, it's raining right now. Um, that's a very good question. Um, so Typically, we try not to schedule rain dates. It's generally difficult if you are working with a team and collaborators to make sure, you know, and so many of us are dealing with that in this um, climate scenario. But um, we try to have an indoor plan B. So um, unfortunately, sometimes best laid plans, we like to bring it indoors. So we usually have indoor spaces held for that. We totally recognize it's not ideal if you have built a piece for outside and then it go it has to go inside. Um, but, you know, just for the nature of the scheduling on both sides for the artist and for us, we haven't had um, much opportunity to have rain dates. So we try to do a plan B. We pray to the gods that <laughs> it doesn't rain. Um, and that's kind of where we're at with that right now. And we have had to move things indoors last year for Laura Nice's piece, um, which we saw Tani Albert at, at the very beginning with the violin on the second floor. That was originally intended to be an outdoor piece. Um, but Laura had to, you know, as we were getting closer to the performance, um, thunderstorms and it was in June. So it, it ended up the weather wasn't great and they had to bring it indoors. So what Laura did throughout the course of the residency was worked both indoors and outdoors to develop a, a plan B. So it does require some scenario planning. 
if you are interested in doing a site-specific outdoor piece. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing this hour with us. Um, if there are any questions that come up, you have our um, information um, info at Snug Harbor that you can, at snug-harbor.org that you can um, reach out to us. Um, we will be posting this video. So if you need to go back to it as a resource, look for us on YouTube um, under the Snug Harbor Cultural Center channel. And um, we hope you'll apply in April and um, that we get to read your work um, and uh, hopefully get to know you and your projects better over the coming weeks. Um, and like I said, we are totally, um, you know, always looking to keep in touch with artists. Um, you can follow us if you are on Instagram at the Newhouse Center and um, our website, um, snug-harbor.org um, under the arts tab will have the open call and our upcoming events and things like that. So we hope you'll keep in touch. Thank you so much. And we will um, look forward to your applications. Thank you. Thank you.